And we're live. Yay, we're so excited. Hi guys, it's Monday night. Our, actually, it's the first uh, Zoom of the month for July. And uh, I am Stephanie and this is Joel Dunn, your number one earners. I did not post that. I think it's kind of weird, but I'd like to tell you guys that anyway. So, so you're the first still, to hear it. Still there uh, because our team is just amazing. But You guys are on fire. Um, so we are super excited though, because we get Lauren Ravan on and I just love her spirit. You guys are going to learn so much from her. She is just this, when you are around her, you're just going to see why you want to be around her. I've always seen her smiling. She lights up the room when she comes in. She's positive. She's willing to learn and she wants to help others. And I think, you know, that's really the qualities of a leader and what we want you guys to see and create in you. And I think that um, you're just going to learn so much from her. And she's got an amazing story. And uh, I have to congratulate her on here because she just went presidential a couple months ago. And, you know, it's such a, such a big milestone. So uh, congratulations on that. But I want you to introduce yourself, uh, say a little bit of who you are, where you came from, your family, and how long you've been with it works. Sure, and thank you so much. That was so kind. Thank you. Um, so yeah, my name is Lauren Ravan, which P.S. Thank you for saying that right. I think it's the first time ever in Network's history. I'm kind of squealing on the inside. Um, so yeah, and I'm from a really small town in South Carolina. I just celebrated my two-year anniversary with It Works, and it was actually um, the month after. Uh, our our two-year anniversary was the month before we went presidential. So just there in the cup of things. Um, you know, I was not looking for an opportunity, um, but I was praying for one. Or is anyone ever guilty of that? Um, so I didn't think that this was something that I would be interested in. I didn't think it was an option for me. I just wanted to try the products. Um, and our story was kind of similar to you guys. Um, we couldn't afford the products. And so that's when I kind of had this moment and I thought, oh my gosh, if I can't afford this right now and, and we don't do anything to change that, then what does this look like in a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? Um, so I knew that we couldn't afford the products, we couldn't afford the business, so I couldn't afford not to do the business. I was a baker um, and not necessarily by choice. We had previously owned a group fitness studio. All of our life savings and time went into that. It failed and um, we were still paying for it and had to figure out a way to have additional income come in. So I learned online how to be a baker because I didn't believe in network marketing. I didn't think that was a real thing. Uh, so I worked about 80 hours a week and um, it was the hardest, most difficult two years of our life. Um, it was hard on our marriage. It was hard on my body. It was hard on our family. And um, so I said yes to the opportunity thinking, okay, worst case scenario, I'm going to make $36 and I'm going to get that cleanse because we didn't have shopping sprees then. Um, I'm going to get that cleanse and um, all of this is going to be okay, right? Well, so e Suite was down when I when I joined the business. Um, I didn't know what the steps to success were. We didn't have connect to the resources we do right now. Um, but what I did have was Google, which led me to YouTube. And I think that the beginning of my journey is really different because instead of um, like a, like a task or a regulated training program, I kind of dove straight into mindset. I worked 80 hours a week with my hands as a baker. So all I could do was listen to trainings um, in the background. So I started right off listening to stories of people who maybe looked or sounded or came from places like I did. So my belief was really high. Um, so then I saw an income chart for the first time. It said that as an executive, you could make an extra $200 a month. And I worked overnights on Friday nights, which would have meant that I could make about um, seven less cakes of our nine-inch round cakes. And I did the math in my head, and that became my goal. Well, you guys, I didn't know what an executive chart looked like. I didn't know what that was. I was just like, cool, executive. That means I got to do my best, right? Um, and I'm a red personality, so I wasn't about to ask any questions. I just knew I was going to do my best. So I tried for three weeks to sign a distributor. Every single person said no. They ignored me. I kept going. I kept showing up when I could. And on my 39th day in the business, we promoted to Diamond and earned a $10,000 bonus. The next month, we promoted to Double Diamond and my husband's account to Diamond. We earned another $35,000 in bonuses. The next month, his account promoted to Double Diamond and we earned another 
$25,000 in bonuses. And it still feels like a dream to me when I tell this story, you guys, because I don't think it was ever our plan. It was God's. And it's crazy what happens when you start living aligned with your purpose. Um, so obviously our life radically changed at a rapid pace. And why I share all of that with you is because you guys, I wasn't even an intentional seed that had been planted by someone. It wasn't, um, I didn't watch like a live video and ask questions and then go someone. I was the person who ignored the messages. I was the person who unfriended you when you messaged me. I wasn't even open-minded enough to have a conversation. So don't give up on those people and don't ever let someone's news feed keep you from thinking that they need an opportunity like this because on the outside, the world didn't know how bad we were hurting. They didn't know how bad we needed this. Um, so yeah, radically changed our life. Two years later, we went presidential. My husband's full time and does this with me now. And um, we just want to help everybody else do it too. That's, that's so, so cool. I did not know that you just wanted like the cleanse. So yeah, that's I've all always- I wanted and we couldn't afford it. I, I didn't. I didn't know you almost had to file bankruptcy because of a gym like us. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that's it's, it's actually very true. Yes, <laughs> I, I love that you guys. That was a key thing. Make sure that you are posting and talking about it because, just like she said, people don't realize they're going to constantly hear that, hear that, and it's okay if people aren't open. There's going to be a time where they're going to be sick and tired of being sick and tired, and and that's what you know. Lauren really, it sounds like happened is she was ready. Who does it? Nobody wants to work 80 hours a week. They see things and wish social now. It's so amazing that we can do this. So Lauren, you are so good on social. Like all I think about you've branded yourself so well, like she's so colorful. Her, that's her personality. And so I really, you know, there's a couple things that I remember talking about, like three ways to personally brand yourself. And sometimes it's just so simple. We don't even realize like for her, it just comes out in her personality with bold colors, bright colors, big fun earrings. It's just who she is. And so when I ever, whenever I think of that, I think of Lauren, I'm like, oh my gosh, these earrings are so fun. And I'm like, it's Lauren. So is there People something- send me pictures of earrings all the time. Yeah, so is there- It has like really become part of the brand. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like kind of like Joel with his beard. You know, he's constantly yeah. getting like stuff in the mail just to try. So one of these things, like, there's going to be three questions at the end of this um, Zoom that I want you guys, I'm going to put out there and then I'm going to have you evaluate and then you're gonna work on yourself and how you guys can start make, getting more customers and more distributors just like Lauren has created. So Lauren, really I wanted to let them know, you know, some of them may not know or follow you, but um, a question that I have for you would be, uh, those are the ones at the end, is um, using the product. Does being a product of the product really help you get customers and distributors? Absolutely. Because I think, um, well, you have to be willing to share different elements of your life because if you're only sharing the products, then they feel like that you're only sharing something because it benefits you. But when right. you're able to offer, you know, multi facets of your life, um, things that make you excited, things that you're knowledgeable about, things that you can add value to, that's how you're going to build and gain trust. Because when you're teaching them, Hey, here's how to, you know, have a, I don't know, fun craft with your kid or, you know, a, a great hotel to stay at at the beach, something that doesn't necessarily benefit you directly. They're going to also trust you when you say, this is the best collagen on the market and this is why. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you have to be okay with sharing a few different, you know, mm -hmm. things about your life, but using the products on a daily basis, um, they see how consistent you are and that obviously you use it. What I think makes us different than paid social media influencers, because a lot of it is the same, but they get paid one time because someone sent them that product. And a lot of times they don't even get paid. They just got it for free, right? Mm -hmm. So you see them use it one time. I want you to think about that for a minute. If you follow influencers on Instagram, how many times do you see them using that product? A lot of times you don't because they don't use it in their everyday life. They were sent it for that image, for that ad. But we show up every single day and we're showing what we're using. And sometimes it's indirectly. Sometimes I'm making my coffee, but I'm talking about my daughter or 
or what I'm wearing that day or whatever it is. Um, so I think that it's really profound when people see, man, she is using it every day and that we just consistently show up and we're excited about it. Yeah. And people don't realize too, sometimes you guys, like she said, we get paid month after month of people ordering. So if they're yeah. seeing us use this for a year, two years, and they're going to do that, you're going to get paid on those orders month after month after month. So if you love something, why wouldn't you talk about it? Like she's drinking collagen right now, right? So it's just, it's just what you do. So some simple things, new distributors, start drinking the collagen. Start just having it maybe on those lives or in the pictures and not even talking about it or an ingredient that you love about the collagen. Maybe it's not about the collagen. You know, I love that people are asking about apple cider vinegar. Like, do you drink apple cider vinegar? It's in the new cleanse. So they, they're dropping hints all along the way that we can really utilize that. But you've done a great job with that. And I know that you've struggled. You've talked about your weight. And so I want people to think when they look at you now, they don't know the before Lauren. And so it's important for us and even myself, guys, because I always think you guys all know my story and you don't. And so it's really important for us to talk about where we've come from because um, it's not always easy. So Lauren is vulnerable. She puts herself out there. So share a little bit about how you've kind of done that through your journey with weight. Sure. Well, and a quick synopsis for everybody. Um, I lost 90 pounds. Um, I gained 40 back. It works helped me lose 33. And then it works helped me lose 17 more thinking keto coffee. Um, so I had quite a story and that was over the course of eight years. But the reality is, is that it's very much part of my story now. It's something that I will fight, face and fight every day for the rest of my life. And I love educating and inspiring other people um, to know that they can change their cards too. Um, but, you know, um, it's hard. It's hard being vulnerable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but I think that what really makes the difference, and it's funny because I just, we were just talking about this earlier, what really makes a difference in our business, you really want to be successful in this business, then the day that you say yes and the day that you go all in is the day that it stops being about me. Mm -hmm. We are being silly and we're being selfish when we put our feelings ahead of what could potentially, ultimately, we knowingly know can bless someone else's life, right? Whether that be the products, whether that be the opportunity. We do that with our pride um, when we want to present the business because we're afraid, right, that, I don't know, that someone's going to say no. Um, and then the same thing with the, the products. We don't want to be vulnerable and say, hey, I've been there before. But you know what? People can't relate to perfection. And uh, people are... Not that they necessarily want, want a sob story, but it's about authenticity. Your story may not be weight loss. It may not even be, um, you know, health related. It might, it might be your skin. I don't know. But what I do know is that we have 40 plus incredible products and that there is one, there is one that will change your life. That will give you an incredible before and after. And if you're brave. And if you're bold and if you want to be successful, then you're going to start sharing the before and after. Don't yep. be yep. like me. I didn't take a great before picture when I first started using it works products because of my pride. And that's one of my biggest regrets in the business. So don't, don't put your pride before other people's blessing. Good. That was a question I was going to ask. Is there anything that you would do? You already knew you what know, you were going to ask. I could feel it. Like starting, you know, brand new as a distributor, some things that I'm like, same thing. I made Joel take a picture because I was like, there is no way. I mean, we were financially hurting so bad and I was so freaking depressed. And I was like, there's no way I'm doing that. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. So I wish that's the one thing rewinding if I could do that. And so Lauren just said that too. Do it now. If you haven't, you can always start now. And so I still, still sometimes think, I'm always a work in progress too. We all are. We all go through life. Like we were on vacation and I ate way too much in the month of June. And so I'm so grateful that we do have amazing products to get me back started. So you can start today, like me and Joel. Okay. The new cleanse came in. We can start a new before and after picture. And I think sharing, sharing with people that I'm human. Like, are you human? Great. We have a cleanse that can get you ready and get you back on track. And this is what I'm going to do just to get back on track. And I feel good. So, um, 
if you haven't, or if you're like brand new, what would I do? Use the products. You have to, people will trust you. And like Lauren said, what are some things that you're passionate about that you love that you want to share? So I, I love that. Um, okay. So how would you build a business? I feel like I'm like Jeopardy or like some like show or something, but how would you build a business if you had no supporters? This is a question I asked like, okay, girls or team, cause there's some, you know, guys in this, uh, what would you want to ask? And so this was a question. So I want to get this question asked answered for them. Sure. Well, you know, I mean, of course, ultimately, like I did have supporters come out, but um, when I first started the business, I told you guys I didn't have E-Suite. We didn't have, I didn't even know necessarily names to look for great trainings. Um, but I listened to an old Eric Worry video. If you're in around network marketing world, Eric Worry does just more kind of like generic. But anyway, there's this old school video about a hundreds list. You guys, I didn't even think of my friends list or my phone. I legit got out a piece of paper. I wrote down a hundred names and I thought with my whole heart, these people are going to support me. These are who would come to my daughter's birthday parties. This is who I would invite to my wedding. Every single one of them told me no. And I could have said in that moment, I could have been a victim and said, I don't have any supporters. Couldn't I? I could have, but I didn't. Instead, I went and found supporters. I went and built more relationships. And in turn, what that did was it showed those 100 people that I was serious. Mm -hmm. And now it's been two years later in the business, but 99 of them, there's still one. 99 of them are now loyal customers or distributors in our business. Okay. So if you're a brand new distributor and you've asked 100 people, fan. Fantastic. That means you're on the path to go diamond in 39 days and presidential in two years. Keep trucking. Yeah. Um, but go find people. And, you know, depending on your personality, sometimes people do so much better when they go out and they just start a brand new, like kind of, kind of like a cold market and they start fresh online. Um, and other times, you know, you stick with the market that you have and you just continually add new to that network every single day. You guys, there's 7 billion people in the world. That's at the end of the day, it's just an excuse. You gotta go find supporters, they're out there. You just gotta find them. You know, people are like this, well, I don't have a warm market. And I, I heard this one time, what's better than a warm market? A bold market. And you get to create that, guys. You have to be bold. You have to be willing to change your life. It's not gonna just happen. You know, you, you have the thought and that's a good step, but you have to take the action behind it. And, you know, I love that you just, you just knew to write down names and who are you going to talk to? And, you know, and you've got to keep showing them every day. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing and reaching out because we never know when that shift is going to happen for them. Maybe they, you know, are finally ready to get their health back on track or we got a new product that came in that they didn't know that we had and they're excited to try that. So uh, be bold. Let that be a word that comes to mind after this um, Zoom is being bold because we're going to give you those three questions at the end. And I really want to make sure that you guys are doing this, especially in the summer. I want people to see you out there because they're going to be looking for product, especially after the barbecue on 4th of July. I promise you, like they're just going to blow it and they're going to think I need to find it. Right. So um, Instagram, Facebook, both. What do you how have you built? The first maybe 15 months of our business was predominantly on Facebook, um, mostly because I guess I felt uh, more efficient with time with Instagram. I felt like it took me 10 times longer to do everything and to figure it out and navigate it. Um, now, I, I, I set a goal for myself. I knew that Instagram was an opportunity um, and that there were tons of people out there that, that I could potentially reach. Um, what I would say about Instagram is that you have, to, it, it's kind of like an investment. Like you've got to put in some work for it to come back, but it will times tenfold. Now about 90% of our enrollments come from Instagram. Um, so you just never know. I think that if you can, you must. So if you can, operate both platforms and you feel like you can successfully, I think Jocelyn said once, if you can successfully enroll your steps to success from both platforms, then work both platforms. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you feel like you're still maybe getting your feet wet with face, Facebook, or you haven't quite gotten your network to 5,000, um, then, you know, master one instead of splitting yourself 50, 50 and not giving a hundred percent to either. 
Mm -hmm. That's what I would say, of course, it's going to be different for every single person. Um, and then there's, there's going to be preference. Some people are going to like building with strangers. Some people are going to like, you know, building with a more warmer established market and, and it's up to you. I, I'm seeing a question pop up and it says, I feel like people are looking at me wondering why I'm not skinny by now or retired. Talk about how you feel. You know, retiring, I'm not retired necessarily. People can say, okay, I'm doing this, but has it given you um, the ability to put gas in your car? Have you made some wrap cash? What are some things that you have done in the business that you're excited about? Has it given you a better mindset? Do you look at things differently? Like, I love the, per the person that I have become because of it works. I didn't think that that was going to happen. Like, I knew I was a good person and stuff, but I've really love that I'm around positive people mm -hmm. that speak life to me. So there's so many things, you guys, it's what are you looking at? And so sometimes we forget, like not, you're not going to make a million bucks right out the get now, guys. And I was talking about this earlier is we need to talk about those little wins. Those matter. People need to see that because that's how we all start. I didn't go to diamond in 39 days, guys. It took me a while. It took me, I mean, I shouldn't say a while for me, it was fast, but it took me five months then it was double and I was, I was there for a year. So everybody's journey is their journey. And so, but who are you becoming during this and what do you want? And if you haven't lost weight, what is your goal for yourself? You know, I, I'm just, I don't know who asked this question, so I'm not picking on you, but I do love this question because you need to write this down. Is it weight loss that you want? Then write those goals down. Are you using the product? Are you working out? What are you doing to hit that goal that you want? And, and share that, track that journey, something like that. So here's, here's oh, oh, sorry, I was going to say the same thing. Here, here's the thing. It, it's an old, old sales adage, and it basically says, facts tell and stories sell. Well, with the social media, it's posts tell, your life sells. Mm -hmm. So you, one, have to become a product of the product, so use it religiously to get your results. It doesn't have to be amazing results. It just has to be results. One, whether it's visible or your feelings, then share those with people, invite people into your life. And those people will in turn watch you. And after a while, they'll come back and go, Hey, I want some of that too. And share other people's journeys. You know, I think that's the great thing is, is when we're highlighting other people, it's, it's so powerful because it's not just me. Like I love sharing other body types, ages, because they can relate. And I love what you did today, Lauren. You did like a, something on Facebook and I wanted to, to, to remind people to do this is, you know, maybe get with your upline if you don't have a team yet or a sideline, get in your team page, but you had somebody come live on your page. So tell me, tell, tell everyone, what was that? And what did you call it? Cause I, I know what it is, but what did, what did you do? We called it a spotlight story and it was for one of our team members. She just went Ruby and, um, but we had had it set up even before she went Ruby and what it was is we're, we're doing it all month long. We're doing spotlight stories from our team, all different walks of life all different ranks within the business, different timelines, different goals. And it is to show what you're saying, exactly what this question was about, that, that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, where you're from. And, and it's a way for um, her to indirectly tell her story to her market, right? Mm -hmm. um, but also a way for my market or anyone else watching live to see that there are all different types of stories. Um, Again, I don't know who asked that question either, but I think it's important to know most people don't sign up to retire because mm -hmm. they don't even believe that's possible. So don't for one minute, don't for one minute believe that lie. And then secondly, you guys, we are not a weight loss company and thank God for that, right? We are a health and wellness and beauty brand and we have so many different things that we can offer people. So I think one other thing, and, and this is for everyone, not just that question, I'm not thinking on you either. You gotta ask yourself, are other people thinking that or are you thinking that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times it's just us. Yeah, It's just us and it's all about you doing that personal development. And so, you know, doing that, you just gave some great tips of what we could be doing more or better on Facebook or Instagram, inviting others to join us, having the support, 
And I'm like, I'm doing that, especially this month of July. Like, I think people need to see it. They just start, they really need to hear it. The more that they hear it, the more they're going to want to be it. So it's all about being bold and putting yourself out there. And, you know, we can always do more. I know, um, was it Gary V? How many platforms does he have people working? And he still has doesn't have enough content yeah, that's, out. That's basically what he said. He said, look at all the stuff that I'm doing, all the platforms I'm on, all the content that I create, and I can never create enough. That's the same thing with contacting and networking in your business. You can never do enough. The moment you do enough is the moment you're dead. Yep. Because of the fact that there's always going to be more people to reach out to, more people to talk to, and more people to get engaged with to join your team or to use a product. So I love that you just kind of said a little bit of this too, is one of, one of the ways, the three ways kind of to, to personalize kind of who you are and how to use Instagram as Facebook is the first thing that you guys have to do is mindset. And it's, you have to get over what other people think. And when you do that, it is like game changer. Like it is crazy. You just start doing it because you know, there's somebody out there that is, will relate to you or they're thinking of a friend that they may send to you, whatever that may be, you're going to start attracting the right people as long as you just do it. Um, and I love that Lauren jumped right in with mindset. She didn't necessarily have the product results right away. She was ready in that mindset of tell me what to do. I'm going to do it. And so make sure that you guys, and you have that choice today to change your mind to get it right and to move forward. Joel just put the screen on so I can see everybody's faces. I'm like, ah, I can't focus. I'm so ADD. Um, and then I think sometimes this is what happens is we get frustrated um, and then we don't do anything. So somebody, I may go to Lauren's page and I'm, I'm gonna pick on you just because your pictures are beautiful. It stresses me out. I love you to pieces and I'm like, I can't be Lauren. I'm just not gonna post anything because I can't be her. And that's what I don't want you guys to feel like. Cause if you go look at her, that is Lauren, that is who she is. And so it's easy for her. It's not like she's trying, that's just who she is. And so remember that, look at that as a guide, not as who you necessarily are. Now, if you are like that, then be that. And so that's something that I have to remind myself daily cause I'm not 20 years old anymore, guys. I am just, you know, but I still can relate to people. And so we need to make sure that we don't get frustrated so we don't post, right? And Lauren's done a great job of just really being her and showing what she what she is. Um, and so then- Can I say one thing? Yes. Okay, so I want you guys, because you said something specific about pictures. You guys, I didn't come into this business knowing anything about social media, anything about, you know, photography, here's the thing. If there's anything that you want to do or that you want to improve at, we live in a world of infinite resource. Mm -hmm. I learned how. Mm -hmm. I Googled. I watched YouTube videos. I listened to podcasts. I, I was horrible at selfies. I refused to do them in the beginning. But, you know, it was part of the business I had to learn and grow and evolve. So if there is something, you certainly don't ever have to be anyone else. But you know, take that moment and say, okay, am I, am I being a victim or am I being a volunteer for this circumstance? Because mm -hmm. there's infinite resources out there for you. And so, no, I love that. Please. That's why I wanted you on. And this may trigger you to do to something too. So you may see that and you may go, I want to polish myself up. Now that doesn't mean like go get your hair all whatever, but polishing and meaning you're going to find what is your style? What colors are you drawn to, to really create your Facebook or your Instagram of who you are? And so this is another thing is, you know, um, you may see it and go, well, she's already done it. If I post it, people are going to think that I copied her. You have way other friends, different friends that you may relate to. So you can really take some words, take a photo, recreate how you are and connect with other people. So there is enough people in this world that you just need to do it. And I'm constantly, I have to look at these notes all the time that I write down because it's true because it's here is what we think. And I'm like, dang it, that was really good. But I have a different audience than what Lauren would have. So it's okay to recreate something that she may have. And it won't even look like hers. I promise you <laughs> it will not look like hers because Hers is nice and bright and who it's, she is. It's, it's kind of like Pinterest fails when you see yes. someone do something awesome <laughs> and then Pinterest you try fail. and redo it and it just doesn't turn out the same. 
that's pretty much how my <laughs> goes. So take out, you know, this, it's, it's already been done. So what's the point? Get that out of your head. Again, it comes back to that mindset, right? Do it. See what happens. If that didn't work, you try something else. And it's, you know, try, failed, keep failing forward. And that's really what Lauren did. She just jumped right in, all in, right from the get-go. Um, and so, and that's the beginning of really what was stop caring because that's when the magic starts to happen. And so Lauren, when you think back, when you, when you started, what was some things, some tips that you could go, this is what kind of helped me do Facebook a little bit better. What was a tip that you really think helped you start getting those customers and distributors right away? Grow your network. Uh, so I told how, you did, how did you grow your network? So I grew my network initially by friends of friends. So I started with my husband's profile, then my best friend's profile, then my brother's profile, then my cousins and my, you know, friends from high school, whatever. So I would go to their friends list and I, I picked a number in the beginning because I was one of those weird Facebook people that was like, if we don't have 500 friends in common, I'm not going to accept your friend request. Um, so I was one of those. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to pick a number. And it was, I think maybe 50 in the beginning, because right, if you're friends with, if you have 50 friends in common, you assume that you must have met these people and you don't remember them. Does anybody else do that? So I would be like, okay, I'm going to send anyone that was 50 friends. And then I was like, wow, that really works. So then I lowered my number. And I was like, okay, now it's going to be 30 friends. And then now it's going to be 20. And now it's going to be 10. And then now I'm like, we have one friend in common. They are perfect. I am sending her <laughs> um, So, you know, I, that's how I started it in the beginning. Um, it wasn't until a little bit later that I learned about Facebook groups. Um, I was already added to so many different groups. And I had worked at different gyms and things like that. So, um, and I don't remember what training I had heard it on, but to go in there and interact and further request from those groups. Um, so that's how I built my network on Facebook. I knew, um, I was told early on that we could get to 5,000. Um, I knew that the 100 that I thought would sign up and do this with me and become the, you know, like super successful right away weren't. So I needed to go find the ones who were. Um, so I built my network right away. And um, then it's constantly evolving from there. Um, the second thing that I did was I identified like what my bare minimum was every single day. I knew that I worked long hours. I knew that I worked with my hands. You know, I had piping bags. It wasn't like I was at a desk and could scroll or go to the bathroom in between. Um, so I had to be just insanely disciplined. Um, so with that being said, I would pre-plan my content the day before. I knew these are the three photos I'm going to post tomorrow. And in the beginning, I was really insecure. I wasn't great at taking photographs. I didn't want to take a selfie. So I reused a lot of um, images or content, and I would use it from Pinterest, but I would never reuse necessarily pictures of it works. Um, products, I would use things like colorful rooms or shoes or, you know, whatever, things that were still my personality. Um, and a great tip for me in the beginning, because I struggled with feeling like I had something to post about other than products, because I didn't do anything else except bait. Um, I did photo challenges. So I would go to Pinterest and type in like you guys, it's the first of the month. If you struggle with content of lifestyle things to post, go to Pinterest, search July photo challenge. It's going to give you something different to post about every single day from what you eat at a cookout to your favorite summer vacation destination, whatever it is. And this is going to educate your audience on who you are and allow you to provide value to them because maybe something you're going to share is, I don't know, maybe you have a tip or something about whatever it is. Um, so that was how I built in the beginning. And um, I think it's super helpful for anyone to do that. And then if you're on Instagram, you can do a similar kind of thing with groups, you know, searching keywords and hashtags of things that you that make you excited, things you can hold conversations about, or things that you're knowledgeable about, even if it's like, I don't know, bugs or something if you're way into that I don't know give me weird you you do you um but search things that make you excited because it can be easy to have conversations I love that the which seems so simple guys sometimes just hearing going to Pinterest and searching July photo challenge like giving you something to think about every day 
And so if you're like me in old school and you have to write that down, get your calendar out, go to July, write that down so that you can look at it, go get a picture so that you're disciplined because I have to have things written down in front of me. That's just who I am. And so when it's written down, it's done, it's gonna happen. So however that is for you or set an alarm on your phone, but just start doing these tips. And that's such a, such a good thing. So the second thing really that we should be doing, we talked a little bit about this because Lauren did a little bit was share things um, that may make you afraid or nervous because you're relatable. And so being that authentic you, there's something there that people will be drawn to. So that's something to think about for your second thing is um, something that makes you nervous to talk about because it's, it's real. The third is be vibrant. What color are you drawn to? Um, what kind of experience do you want people to come to when, when you go to your page? Me and Joel are completely opposite. It's so hard because it's like yin and yang. I'm very white and pink and he is dark gray. I'm like, don't put that filter on my photo. Like, that's not what I want. You know, I want it nice and bright. And he's like the dark side. And I love that because that's just who he is. Our, our shared Facebook page is just such, or Instagram is just such a mess because it's, <laughs> It, just, does it, just, flow. it does not flow because it's her picture weird my yeah. picture weird yeah. yeah even if you go to my instagram like it's hard because when we were in spain it was so his like what he was about because it's the dark the, the architecture the gothicness now it was pretty and beautiful but that's not necessarily what my eyes are drawn to so that's something that i want you guys to ask yourself what are you drawn to and when you guys really think about that you're going to start creating your space where it's you, where it's easy, where it starts to flow. You start to talk about, you know, it works in between the things, but also the things that you love and that you can give knowledge and value to. And that's really what Instagram and Facebook is for. If it's complaining, take it down. If you write it and it's not going to do something for someone, take it down. What can you do? Cause would you look at that? I, I'm always looking for something Would that, would that interest me? If not, I'm skipping past it. So what draws you in? So that's, I don't know if you guys caught the first, the first question, but um, really the mindset. So get over what other people think. So those are some things that get over what people think. So really, where do you want to be with this business? What do you want to do? Are you going to use the product? Are you going to share about that? And then share about those vulnerable moments in your life. And now you don't have to do that every day, but something that touches you or that you can do. And then um, that vibrant, what are those colors? And those are just some three simple, you know, steps that you can really start utilizing and building your, building your brand. And I think, you know, and I think of Lauren, she has done such a good job of building her brand of who she is. And that's why she's seen success. But you guys, she did that by researching. She didn't know where else to go. So Google is amazing. Pinterest is amazing. She has given you guys so many amazing tips that will all be Instagram and Facebook like rock stars in, in no time. But Lauren, if there's one more thing that you could like, you're like, this is a must. What is a must that, you know, for your business that you do? Before you say that, I'm going to lead in with this. You guys, if you haven't caught on yet, this is something very, very invaluable that if you just get this piece, Lauren didn't do anything by happenstance or chance. She took direct, focused, intentional steps to design the life that she wanted. So if you have not taken time yet to sit down and make an intentional plan, and then follow through with that intentional plan, mm -hmm. that's something that you need to do right away because that's what happened. She got very intentional about everything that she was doing and that's when success started coming. When you start doing things all over the place like spaghetti, you know, you may be awesome enough that some of it will work out, but the moment that you align everything and become absolutely focused and intentional, that's when things are gonna take off for you. That's good. I think Wow, that was so good. And actually what I'm going to say kind of aligns perfectly with that. You guys, consistent effort does not always equal consistent results, but it always equals success. So anything that you're taking from today and you implement, do not expect to be like math and rolling, 
or, you know, like this might major overnight Instagram success. Um, seeds grow underground first. So just give yourself some grace and give yourself some grit and mm-hmm. put in the work and I promise it will pay off. Work like you know, whatever rank you're working for, um, like that salary check is coming. Work mm-hmm. with that intentionality and I promise that it will. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just so thankful and honored, you guys. Um, I just pray that something gave someone some encouragement tonight and can't thank you guys enough for the opportunity to share. I Absolutely. And you gave me great ideas. Like it's so funny, you know, you think, God, what can I learn? But we're constantly learning. And so the leaders are always showing up. And so you're a leader on the Zoom. You're showing up. You're doing this. I saw somebody say, I feel like I'm spaghetti. It's okay. You can hone in and focus and, you know, do those questions that I asked. Write those down and be more focused on what you want to do. And like Lauren, she wanted the executive, didn't really know, but she just went for it and did the work to do that. And so we're going to really end on this. I appreciate Lauren so, so much. I hope you guys got out as much as I did because I know I did. So show her some love, tell her thank you in the comments. But this is something that I want, want you to go back through and really think about as we're growing through the summer is, and I, I've heard this and I know Joel's heard this too, is if you're not in the game, you're out of the game. And we want you in the game every single day. And that's how you're going to consistently win. And like she said, there's days that I may do the things that don't produce that distributor customer that day, but it doesn't mean that I don't keep doing. And so we're going to leave you with that. It's an awesome way. I'm just so excited to start off July with such an amazing Zoom. I think you can see why we had Lauren on as a special guest because her heart is she's gonna she's gonna be at the top and she wants you there with her and I am just honored that she said yes right away and and she was so willing to jump in so I appreciate you she decided to extend her her vacation because this is her life she created so why not so I know she was at Disney and you know worked this in so Lauren you know I I just thank you so much for for jumping on and everybody loves you so I appreciate all all your your work that you put in and congratulations to you and your team. And uh, we're excited. We'll see you guys again next week, Monday, before we go, put your smiley faces on because we're going to do a picture. We have to end with that. I would, I should have, I was going to do this, Lauren. I got some really awesome big earrings in Asheville. Joel's like, what are these? I was like, it's my inner Lauren. <laughs> it's well, my- first of all, the next time you guys come to Asheville, we're only like 45 minutes away. So I you did- have to tell us. Okay. But I would have totally appreciated the big hearing. <laughs> yes, I, I will come back. I love it there. So, all right, everybody g- good? All right. Thank you again, everybody. And we'll see you again next week, Monday. Have an awesome week. Thanks, guys. We love you. We appreciate you. Love you. Bye.